Hello and welcome back to this T-Box Media coverage of Lee Card MPO action at the 2023 Topor Nuiatea North Island Disc Golf Championships here from the beautiful Topor in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm Henry Pearson and I'm joined on commentary as always by Jake Brennan. Thank you Henry here leading us off Max 14 down. Uh, not a hot start to the round, he's plus one so far, and that brings Jack O'Sullivan into the mix, also at 14 down, our two leaders for the tournament so far. What a battle it is at the top. Indeed, Maxime started the day with a four-shot lead on Simon. Simon trails slightly from our two leaders, just three back, and uh, Maxime has dropped a little bit in the standings. We're rounding out the card with another RPM boy, Levi Stout, a very talented junior player just 15 or 16 years old at the time of filming and we move forward into our back 11 here of our final round and here we go hole 11 163 meters once again players will be required to throw a drive 110 120 meters something straight through the trees here that doesn't get hung up too early anything in that distance out there you can see the landing zone um, straight in the middle of the fairway right about here and that will leave a fairly unobstructed uh, throw into the pin um, a little bit of a low ceiling but players will look to skip up and even hit the tree um, that you see there that's edge of circle anything beyond there will leave themselves a fairly easy putt I found this hole particularly challenging actually I think I bogeyed it both rounds interesting how did you end up playing the hole Jake uh, overall terribly um, I managed to get hung up early both times so I think as long as they don't do that I think all players will have a bit of a look Jacko making the mistake that I was talking about and actually just overturning this one here but that'll be an obstructed look into the pin interesting to see how he approaches it from there I feel the shape on this hole of Jake is quite an interesting one because there's a natural bunker area on the left hand side in the preferred landing zone which you'd really like to avoid but with all of our players being right-handed and backhand dominant they would be inclined to risk landing in that area off the tee so that would ensure that the players would be more inclined to throw an Anheuser out of the hand off the tee which brings those early trees that we saw Jacko hit um, into play that was an outstanding shot by Max. The airtime that he gave that. Simon unfortunately swallowed up by that row of trees that lines the right hand side. He might still be up there actually and will need his longest arms to clutch it out of the limbs. So the big story from our front nine, Jackson Sullivan carting four down, or excuse me, on our front 10 and catching up with the pace of Maxime Tange who struggled through that middle section of the front 10. Despite having a four and five shot lead on our second and third place getters after round two, Maxime and Jacko find themselves tied at the top with 11 to play. And that makes for a very exciting finish here, Jake, at the last major of the year. Absolutely. I, I love it when there's two or three or four players in the mix. You know, it just makes things a little bit more exciting rather than a runaway. Oh, <laughs> Levi calling not for it, but couldn't have hit that tree any square. I think for the second time in a row, Jake, Levi has met his match with that single guardian tree there on the left-hand side. Still leaves himself an outside circle look for Birdie, and Maxime might just extend his lead here to one, which is a good sign for him early on in this back portion of our final round that'll have to sit wow and Jacko is very long on that one that's for how hard he had to work to claw back into it I feel like he's just let that one slip in that shot that could be a turning point in the match so this heavily obstructed long back of C2 putt is to save par and with Maxim parked in close for his birdie we could see a very early two shot swing
Simon so close almost can't believe it a little bit frustrated he's had a bit of an up and down round there when you have all those colors on the scorecard um, you look back and you, you say to yourself what could have been this basket playing very tough and a bit teasingly all players hitting metal and finally getting it in the basket So our lead card are currently progressing through a stretch of seven 200 meter par fours in a row. This is the third of those seven, which is an interesting stretch on this course, Jake. How did you feel about having to navigate such a string of par fours on the trot? The thing is, I felt all the par fours were gettable. So it, it did get a little bit frustrating when you start going par, par, bogey, par, and then you just you think about all the shots that could have been and, and things that start slipping away from you. Uh, so, yeah, but I suppose you try and treat every hole as a new hole as we move into our par 12, uh, par, sorry, hole 12, par four. Uh, 160 meters, double Mando off the tee. Players will look to pump something straight here, trying not to go too long. It will come into their mind. There is the golf green that they could hyzer over the hill, uh, but anything shorter there, uh, I think players will have a fairly unobstructed look into the pin. Um, then they'll have the option where they approach it with a forehand or a backhand play. OB does surround the pin, so leaving it close uh, is preferable. Henry, how did you find this one? I felt the tee pad was a little bit uphill on the runner. Yeah, we mentioned that in round one, Jake, that it kind of countered the uh, low ceiling that you uh, needed to navigate off the tee um, which I kind of found a little bit awkward frankly in hindsight I may have opted for a forehand roller through that double mando but I think if I recall correctly there was a bit of wind in round one which didn't allow for such a possibility round three looks uh, final round here looks a lot calmer though so it could have been on the cards Henry a forehand roller what like that that is you're the, you're one of the guy I feel like your shot repertoire is outstanding you've got your thumbers your forehand rollers I've got my hyzers hyzer flip and turnover backhand <laughs> we did see you throw a couple of good forehands in round two Jake so I would um, be go so far to suggest that your shot repertoire is at least one shot broader than you've just described so don't count yourself out too light. <laughs> Certainly doesn't have a forehand roller in the bag. Of, I've never thrown one in my life. I don't. <laughs> but uh, look, just to respond to your compliments about my game, thank you. I really appreciate the ego inflation, uh, Jake. My head is probably going to pop before the end of the round today. So be wary, viewers, that we might be down to one commentator shortly. Just to take you down, Henry, I, I didn't say you were particularly good at any of the shots. Oh. I, just, I just said you had the shots. Oh, well, I better stick around for the rest of the round then. <laughs> Simon with his approach for two. This is quite a way back. Let's go. Oh, man, it hits. Well, you said it all. That's probably a fair synopsis of how that shot went. That seems just such a soft shot for Max there. He, he ran up like he was going to power shot it and then he just sort of let it go out of his hand, but he finds himself pin high. The very interesting contrast between disc selection of Maxime and the other three players on our card, we've noticed that Simon and Jacko particularly have at times lent on straight to understable um, discs as their preferred choice, particularly in the fairway and distance driver department. Simon and Jacko both ones to lean on kahus and picker pickers at time whereas Maxime really is just throwing some of the beefiest stuff in the game so Jake any thoughts to add on that observation I, I totally agree I to be honest I think it actually plays into Maxine's advantage when there's some wind around and you're on a wide open golf course and you've got the power just use the power and, and throw it I think I do think he has got more arm speed than the other players on the card. 
So I think that they have to use that flip up and they have to use that that glide function of the disc where Maxine is just power and then he's going to try and hit his putts like this one. And if he is, oh, that was that was good. That was a really good effort. Yeah, Jack, I think you're on to the right track there. Maxime really does not have any risk at all in his game of turning a disc over too much, given that he's throwing mutant splices and forces, which are discs that will pretty much never turn over for you. Pekka Pekka's and Kahu XGs, on the other hand, can be prone to if put on the wrong release angle or pumped into a little bit of a headwind, but We'll see how those two contrasting styles progress throughout the rest of our round. We move forth to hole number 13, another par 4, this one 210 metres. The real key obstacle on this hole is two uh, OB rivers that line the two ditches here um, that run between the fairway, the first one we're flying over at the moment. Some players may opt to uh, lay up uh, short of the first uh, river area. Others might look to bomb it over into the safe area that the drone's flying over at the moment before we progress to an elevated basket sitting atop a tee pad uh, at the end of the hole. Levi starts us off. That looked like a flash of a Kotuku stamp and he has decided to lay up. I think that's short of a layout just there. Interesting play. And Jacko also deciding to lay up. That I feel Jake is an interesting choice from a guy like Jacko who can throw a very big distance drive off this hole should he choose. Interesting. Uh, one back. I, f I feel like that is that's actually a mistake from Jack. I feel like he should have gone for that one. He clearly has the distance, and it does make the hole a lot easier if you do cross that first island and, and make your way to the second island. But hey, who am I to say? Um, I'm I'm down on third cut. <laughs> so <laughs> that looks like it could be another layup. I think that uh, wind was a factor here on hole number 13 playing slightly into the headwind and a good nudge off the tee is always required to get into that safe area where Mac, we saw Maxime's disc land but into the headwind that adds just an, another element of uh, power required to ensure a safe shot off the tee. Were you going for this one in the round Henry? I did end up throwing distance driver off this tee and I managed to find a safe position on the left hand side yeah. but in saying that it was a very well timed shot so I suppose I also went for uh, the right. second island and I uh, I didn't find it was too difficult in this win so yeah just really surprised specifically Jacko who I feel has has definitely got the power to get there well he's right there in contention isn't he but look in saying all of that we could surely assume that Jacko would back himself from any distance from 100 in and he's probably right on the top end of that range isn't he? <laughs> Simon puts a nice one into the circle from um, quite a way out. They're probably all going to birdie here and we're just going to eat our words. Yeah all of our <laughs> hype and anticipation was for nothing Jake. Whole breakdowns and over analysts and everything I suppose that's that's very classic of our, our disc golf game is trying to make it more complicated than a simple game needs to be. It's just put the disc in the in the basket in as least shots as possible and he's put it on a great line though, hasn't he? Provided it's hysering up. But it does find the tree though, that's a bit of a shame. It would have been in a great spot had it had the uh, distance to get around that last tree. And here Max has just left for a, a power stance and hyzer play. love it it just sets up so well for his game doesn't it that Anheuser that's going to pan back and fight the wind at the end with a stable disc decision time for Levi I think that was a deliberate layup I don't think there was any question in his mind whether he was running that or laying that up no safe as houses out there on the right Simon however 
he'll want this one. And Simon makes a great birdie. The only one of our three who laid up short of the river to card his birdie. And Maxime, who just lost a shot to Jacko on the previous hole, will get it right back here on the 13th. And move ahead of Jacko by an additional shot to a two shot buffer. As our boys tap out, we will head to a brief commercial break and we'll see you back for the 14th hole. If that wind wasn't there, I would have probably Welcome back there. Yeah, Jacko just making mention of the wind that is out there. Hole 14 I think becomes very exciting in the wind. We have a left to right wind on the day. So that does open up the max distance Anheuser line where it can flex out. And boy am I excited to see all the players play this hole, especially Max here. Um, really does open up um, an opportunity for players just to unleash a drive and get as much distance as they can on this 189 meter par 4. Anything up the top of the hill is fantastic and that leaves a little bit of a technical approach to this guarded basket around the trees. As long as you beat the trees, um, the putting green doesn't offer too many challenges. So I think the distance will be key off the tee. Maxime crushing on a force and he's put it on an almightily nice angle to attack this hole. Wow. That is blasted, Jack. Not too bad. To give you an idea, that top of the hill is what? At least 150, right? I think it'd be that drive would be roughly 150, wouldn't it? At least. Soaring through the air on such a good line. Maxime exposes the bottom of the flight plate to the helping wind. And with a stable disc, it just starts to hise her out at the end. Was bad. it me, or did, did that get there very quick? Yeah. It did look like it did, didn't it? It sort of panned down the hill a little bit as it progressed in its flight. So I opting for the same line, Kahu XG. It's going to turn, but fizzle out a little bit there at the end. That could be in trouble. Ooh. That's going to leave a fun upshot where he's going to have a blind look up at the pin and have to throw something fairly interesting. Levi looks like he's lining up the hyzer play. Get around that. See, this is my preferred line, Jake, out and around that tree there on the right-hand side. Just brings that left-hand play that Sai's going to find himself in trouble with um, out of play. Do you have a preferred line on this one? I played this course two times and I threw different lines each time. I think the right hand side play is the much safer play. I mean, if you try and turn something over and you don't get it, uh, you end up where Sai is and from down there it's very hard to birdie. But obviously as we've seen Max, the, the risk reward, I think Max is absolutely prime for a birdie. Jacko making that same mistake as well and once again he'll be pinched. I think these players, if they had their time back, they might go um, the hyzer play. So one exceptional drive and three that left a bit to be desired from our lead card here on the 14th. Levi now to play his second shot from a very long way back with a distance driver. And he looks like he's roped it on a pretty good line but doesn't have the length. Close but not quite Jack. He'll have an obstructed look there. This is just a fun hole, I think. Um, getting up the top of the hill and, and with the downhill play, it's just fun to unleash six, seven, eight drivers and, and just try different lines. And 
just once again activate the glide function of your disc and try and pump up to that 150 160 meter drive Jacko unfortunately bears the brunt of that awkward position he found himself in and Simon looking here to manufacture some very strange shot that's a tomahawk oh what a roll oh <laughs> no way <laughs> Outstanding by Simon. Maybe that is the way to play the hole. Heiser out to Tomahawk to pin hit. That's the way to play the hole if you're an absolute showman, isn't it? And Max finds himself quite a wee way out after that outstanding drive. Jacko not in the best of positions to potentially capitalise on... Max's blunder, could that go in though? Oh, and what a punt. It needed to take a very special effort from the back of C2 to potentially apply a bit of pressure to his card mate Maxime and Jacko delivers when he needs it most. to the RPM basket there for the catch. So Max further out than he would have hoped to be. Good putt. I feel like he needed that one just to say like, you know, I'm still here, I'm, I'm still in the lead, you're chasing me. Um, yeah, just to stamp his authority on the round. It is a pretty confident statement uh, from Max to drill that one despite Jacko's heroic efforts there from C2 to maintain the two shot buffer. And look at Max's last couple of holes. He really struggled through that front section of the uh, front 10, but has come back with a vengeance since we've turned uh, into our back 11 with four birdies in the last five. <laughs> Is that a star frame from the card? That'd be the first star frame of the round. Jack. Outstanding! You wouldn't have, you would not have put your money on that off the tee. That was three players completely out of position. Indeed. The fifteenth hole is another par four, the last in the stretch of seven in a row. This one, 176 meters. It plays uphill and to the right. Our players will be throwing probably understable discs that are going to turn late in their flight up this golf fairway. They'll look to land in the shortly mown grass here at the bottom of screen now before uh, progressing to a basket that's tucked in on the right hand side. The only real trouble here on the screen is an OB line that lines the bushy area on the right hand side. Anything into the circle on the left hand side of the basket is a safe run. So our players with a good shot in the middle of the fairway will look to secure a birdie three here on the 15th. I might add, Henry, something else that comes into the play on this hole is there is a right to left win, so throwing a, a turnover shot with a right to left, um, it does become a bit more challenging. I think if the players had a 120 metre forehand, that would be preferable, but however, Max putting it in prime position with his force. Yeah, even the further left that you go, sort of like Max has there, the more open the screen becomes and a guy like Max who doesn't throw many forehands um, throughout a round will feel more comfortable with a backhand from that angle than he would if he were further to the right hand side of the fairway. Now I've been where Simon is in the round and it is a, I think, a tricky upshot with the hills and, and you've got to throw up to the pin um, short which um, with the OB right I think it's a, quite a touchy shot it's interesting to see how he plays that one that is the shape of choice from Levi it pans a little bit back at the end and might find himself with some funny footing like you were talking about Jake but is otherwise in a very good spot there in the middle of the fairway Jacko doesn't seem happy with it. And probably with good reason. That is a long way left. And a very awkward ceiling to contend with here on his second shot. As we see the gallery start to build here for our lead card. It 
So Jacko just making a little bit of a mistake there on 15, not a huge blunder, but with Max in a pretty good position um, to lay up, it may be that Max just squeaks ahead of him by one. Simon just making that upshot look fairly easy there. I suppose that what we do as commentators is try and make a what we think is a hard shot and the players just make it look easy, but that's why they're on lead card and we are not. Beautiful touch there from Maxime with the RPM Ruru and the only forehand approach out of our group, the player most to the right hand side of the fairway is Levi and he touches a Kia there into the circle. So all of our players bar Jacko are Gonna have a look for their birdie three. Henry, just interesting on, on this course. I think a lot a lot of courses play to a right hander's preference. However, on this one, do you do you think it suits the right hander or suits the left hander more? I think the fairways here on this course, Jake, are reasonably wide open on most holes and have to say that most holes don't necessarily favour a lefty or a righty either way, at least the par fours. Par threes, there's a few that probably favour a righty and then others that favour a lefty, so um, I tend to say that it probably goes both ways here on the total temporary uh, layout here on the golf course. How about you? Uh, would you agree or have some contrasting thoughts? I think a lot of the holes do play either way however there are some specific holes that i think are a little bit more easy for the left-handed uh, player particularly this these these three coming up this one and the next two holes if you if you look at how they're positioned um definitely sets up well for a left-handed player in my opinion um but overall i, I do agree with you on, on golf courses it doesn't matter what what you throw yeah, i think by that same token jack those you're right in saying the next two are probably left hand favourable next three but the two after it I'd say are right hand favourable we mm. move forward hole 16 it's a par 3 115 metres the first of our holes to break the par 4 stretch it's one of the longer par 3s on the course and there's quite a bit of OB to contend with this early boat OB that we're passing over now really doesn't come into play it's the fences on the left and long of the basket that the players might uh, find with an errant drive our guys will be throwing somewhere in the seven to nine speed category up into this basket um, and look to secure a, at least a look for their birdies. Maxime leading the way with a Dismania Instinct. And he'll pull up a little bit short. Yeah, just making a bit of a correction. I remember him being long in our feature card in round one, so maybe just disking down a bit. Simon with that classic flip up turnover play. That I think is a Paradise Plates commemorative <laughs> cosmic pick a pick -a. Outstanding knowledge of the RPM discs, Mr. Henry. Not too shabby. I was impressed myself there, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as if you own some discs and you, uh, you know, are quite acquainted with, with a lot of disc brands out there. That, uh, that sounds reasonably spot on, Jake. And saying all of that, I have no idea what Levi just threw. <laughs> There's no mistaking what Jacko's got in his hands here. That will be a minty green pecker pecker. The famous minty pecker pecker, actually. Indeed. And probably a good choice on this hole because it's playing slightly into the wind. And uh, with a slightly more stable pecker pecker, the wind's not going to rip the disc over to the right quite so much as we saw Simon's turnover. Jacko in a great spot there, just parked next to that bush short of the green. Not sure if that was a, a trying to make or if it was a deliberate layup there, but he'll be parked for par. Maxine showing us his flexibility again and caching. What a putt from Maxime. He has made 
six birdies in the last seven holes really starting to push and put his foot down on our other chasing competitors was that a fist bump from Maxine? I'm sure. I think so, and he's probably well within his right to employ a fist bump here on this hole after the stretch that he has put together. Jacko now to try and keep pace with Maxine, who's really clawing away. And a nice catch there on the right hand side by the disc mate. So Jack, we have approximately four or five holes to go here at the final round of our North Island Championships with Jacko three back. Are you counting him out just yet or do you think anything can happen? Oh look, with the way hole 20 and 21 shape up where people have taken birdies and bogeys on that, so I think there's still a few one or two um, swing plays on that. Speaking of swing plays, 17 can be one with the OB on the right here. Uh, but this is one of those holes I feel like a forehand play could be advantageous. So I do think this does play into Jacko's uh, strength a little bit um, coming down the stretch here. But as long as you hit this initial gap here and then finishing from the left to the right into this open green really. Um, at 97 meters and downhill it does play short. Henry did you like the, the change that this hole presented? Or I did like the change for context for our viewers. This hole played about 20 meters longer last year than it did this year, and the Mando, excuse me, the OB area on the right, I don't think was a factor. So um, it made for a much more technical hole, Jake, which I quite enjoyed, frankly. Um, and maybe I'm saying that with a bit of a bias, Jake, that I do now have a chippy forehand like Levi's just thrown in my repertoire. Asked me six months ago and I might have said something a bit different. What do you think of the hole? Are you happy with the change? Well I threw forehand on this hole. Well that's um, a surprise. Yeah very surprising. Um, no I, I liked it. Hey I think there needs to be holes that favour the right right side and favour the left side and and that force you to throw a specific line and, and force you to throw a specific shot. So um, no I liked it. Well, Jake, I'd like to commend you because that was very reasonable and unselfish <laughs> of you to give such a response like that. You could have said, now stuff you, it's a terrible hole. It doesn't favour my backhand at all. Yeah, it definitely doesn't suit my game. But hey, um, my get still trying to evolve my game as I'm sure all disc golfers in New Zealand are. So um, bring on the courses that challenge us. Um, saying that, maybe not in tournaments. Mm. You know, it does, doesn't help me any. Simon catching a early branch and probably lucky not to fall into the OB area to his right. But this should be mincemeat for a guy of Simon's talents to get up and down. And that he will. Maxine has missed a few. But he's also made some really good putts too. Oh. He knew it out of his hand, didn't he? Leaves the door open for Jacko. I think he knows he needs this one. And he does not take advantage of the mistake from our leader. Which is a real shame. That was a big wide open door, Jake, that Jacko could have stepped through. Yeah, he'll be frustrated with that for sure, yeah. He knows it too, I think. Didn't pick up as many, walked away. Mm -hmm. And Levi Stout draws level with Simon Feezy now, throwing his name in the mix. So I think it's, it's going to be a tough ask for Levi to win it, but in terms of positional play, you know, he's, he's right there. Second, third is, is still on the cards. He's certainly uh, making a great challenge to finish on the podium here at the North Island Champs. Look at the gallery in the background. How awesome is it to have a gallery in New Zealand and people watching the rounds and... Yeah, I think it's exciting. Indeed. 
Hole number 18 is a par 3, it plays quite significantly downhill. At just 97 metres it'll be probably playing closer to 75 or so with that elevation change. The hole sweeps from left to right and the basket is just tucked in here on the right hand side in a little cutout in the forest area. Uh, players will probably likely to throw a 7 speed or less with low glide. Um, that's going to hit the ground early and just check out before that enters the circle. A reasonably gettable hole, the elevation change really is the only significant factor here. And Levi leads us off with I think what might be a glow fire bird. Maybe leaving that a little bit wider than he would have liked. Francis Orange on my card was throwing zone putter at this forehand. Probably not a bad choice here, Jake. I think that would negate the possibility well, that uh, he would finish long of the basket, which really does cut off the putt. With that grassy mound and little niggly tree there on the left of screen. Maxime in a good position there. He'll have a wide open look at the basket. Jake, what did you throw off this tee? I threw something like Max's. I, I was trying a turnover backhand. Um, it didn't work out for me, but um, yeah. <laughs> That's all I can really say about say that. Say no more. <laughs> I didn't bogey. Oh, that's really good. Because that would have been quite embarrassing, I think, on the side. That would have been embarrassing. Well, you're not on coverage. You can do it if you want. Right, okay. no, one, no one sees it. So. Right. Yeah. Did he say, oh, yeah, out of his hand? It's very confident of him, isn't it? Yeah, wow. And he moves to 15 down. Really making a push here. Look at that back 10, or back 11, sorry, from Levi. He's very quietly kind of chipped away at his... Uh, round hasn't he on this back 10 six birdies carded in the last nine holes and Maxime not letting up at all at this stage not even giving Jacko a sniff here Jacko also with a great putt wow if you, two. if you watch the putting on this you'd say putting is easy anyone can do it but all these players putting from circle's edge to outside circle and just making it rain an interesting contrast to the last hole really where both Jacko and Maxine missed from inside eight meters and Sai unfortunately gets three times big putted by our group three times big putters those shoulders were very low on that walk-in yes it was a bit of a dreary uh, posture of Sai on that hole and probably with good reason he would have liked to have made that putt and here we go, moving on to the what I think to be the very challenging par 3 at 101 metres. Uh, players will try and throw something stable, in my opinion, out onto the right hand side. The pin is tucked um, under these trees and long. The previous uh, pin placement was just inside this nestled tree area that we're going to pass right now. However, the pin has been pushed back to make the hole more difficult, so you'll need to penetrate further under the, the low ceiling and give yourself an obstructed putt at this guarded pin. I suspect most of our players, Jake here, will be throwing high speed distance drivers just to get that extra bit of ground play at the end to push further into that guarded green area. What I found really challenging about this hole is the golf green does skip, yes, however just off it the grass um, was significantly longer, you're talking two or three inches, so that skip was much less and you can just see that this getting grabbed a little bit there and not really penetrating as far as you would have seen it penetrate on a golf green. Mm, right, you are Jack. I think the, the back door line that we saw from Maxime in round one might be the preferred play on this hole. There's quite a bit of barren dirt there at the back uh, or the top end of this green and a late skipping disc could see itself progress to the circle at a bit more pace than the straighter line that we've seen all three of our players push through so far. Checker getting through there, getting a bit lucky and fortunate. I think he might be at edge of circle. It's 
Simon getting a good skip off the ground and he'll find himself well inside circle. What a bounce back. Maxine showing a bit of respect. So our T-Box Media coverage here brought to you by uh, the wonderful crew of uh, volunteers, Paul, Joel and uh, and many others that have contributed to the camera work over the course of the weekend here at Topo. Do be sure to like and subscribe to our videos and the channel um, for exceptional content up and down the North Island. T-Box will be there to cover it all. And the next event I think that we'll see T-Box at Jake is Brook Park Brave uh, later this month, April, here at Tikawiti, the beautiful Brook Park course. Jack, oh, what a birdie there. He moves to eight down on the ground. Absolutely. Giving himself every opportunity to stay in contention with Max. We know hole 20 can go either way. There can be pars, birdies, bogeys, double bogeys on that if you don't make the gap. So Jack are needing that one to stay in contention. Are you a woo boy, Henry? I'm not much of a woo boy, no. It's, uh, <laughs> I find it, uh, when I hear it on the Pro Tour and when Ricky's playing, it sort of annoys me a little bit, <laughs> actually. Well, if I ever watch you play, I'll, I'll woo some of your shots. Oh, thanks. It's just That's a... really annoying of you, Jake. <laughs> um, what about you? Are you a woo boy? Oh, absolutely not. I feel yeah. awkward. Um, it, it would definitely be a first forced woo for you but right, right on I'll okay. be willing to do it alright well I'll see it when I believe it or believe it when I see it I suppose our gentlemen tap out and that sees the 19th come to a close and we'll move forth to the second to last of our day how do you build your better game reps Focus. The right equipment. Zuka. Disc golf carts for a better game. Yes, shout out to the Zuka carts. Aiden Barnes winning the Zuka cart of the tournament. That was an exceptional win, and what a celebration as well to see him. In jubilation after winning the raffle on Saturday night. Hole 20, one of the more challenging par fours on this course. Players will really find their first challenge immediately off the tee with a very tight gap to navigate before the hole opens up. And uh, the landing zone, preferred landing zone, is roughly at the bottom of your screen now. The greens, not much easier to be frank. It's tucked into the left hand side here of the trees. So a very high hyzer can be played on one of two lines, either the short opening here that we see the camera turning to the left of the screen, or a backdoor option to find your disc nestled amongst some short trees. An OB area runs down the right hand side of the fairway, so players may need to watch out not to push too long off the tee. But the real key is getting out clean through this first initial gap, and Jacko leads the way with a kahu. That looks to be on a pretty sharp line. Excellent. You take that shot every day, don't you? Very tidy. And the woos in the background probably well deserved there, Jake. No matter how annoying they are. I like this even better from Levi. I think pushing a little bit longer um, and challenging that, what, that OB line right there will leave you a better upshot as long as that tree doesn't obstruct him. There's two real decisions you need to make here, whether you go low or I thought Max was going to go the higher route. I think the higher route just lets it hyzer a little bit more and finish just there, which is position A. And Maxine finds himself in almost exactly the same position as he did in Round number one. The three boys before Simon have gotten out the gap clean and Simon makes it four from four with a Kahu XG 
right down the middle of the fairway. A great grouping there from our players on this hole. Outstanding. I don't think you'll see too many other cards with better tee shots than that. Seems almost tradition that at least one player in the group gets caught up before exiting that initial gap. Good. We can't see that, but the claps tell you everything you need to know, and I think Simon will at least have a putt. Bit of a bugger from Jacko to split the two ideal lines on this hole and traverse into the guardian tree. And what a nice little gallery we see gathering to see our lead card finish their rounds off here at the final major of the year and good on the Tokwar Disc Golf Club to have pre-ordered the weather for this last card yeah I think that's a, another costly mistake from Jacko I mean I th he really needed to put that one close and, and give himself a part and even if Max doesn't birdie here and he just pars I think Max in very much so in the driver's seat. Barring an absolute nightmare on the last hole. So Jack Opal will be odds on to make his four and given the distance that Levi is putting to the basket from, Maxime is likely to be in there close. This to extend to a three shot buffer. There's that air ball again. He's got it. He's done that a few times. I mean, I wonder what that is. That's a missed putt, Jack. <laughs> is it nerves? Is it is it technique? Is it what is it? Yeah, you make a good uh, point. It's an interesting inquiry for a guy of Maxim's talent. From T to green, he's pretty sharp. But then once we get to the green, that's probably where he's losing strokes on. Um, on his capability, isn't he? I wonder if you could have a statistic most shots lost on the green. And I think, mm. yeah. But here we go, our final hole, and what an exciting final hole it is. This hole can be birdied, it can be bogeyed, it can be parred. So anything could happen. Two shot swing is in play. Throw your drive out a little bit longer this time. Maybe 130 meters will be ideal. There is a Mando tree on the right that players will have to navigate left of. From here, this is the ideal landing zone, which leaves a fairly routine upshot. Maybe 80 meters, a mid-range into this elevated pin that is subject to a little bit of wind and many gallery onlookers. A very nice shake there from Simon off the tee. It's got to get a bit of legs just to get up there far enough. And he's more than uh, far enough up the fairway to have a clear look at the basket from 90 and in. I think Jacko must be telling himself, you've got to get the birdie here to give yourself any chance of even a playoff. Looks to be a little too far right, but stapling up just in time. Hopefully he's far enough to um, be around the corner and not have to negotiate that Mando tree. Interesting, he went fairway there and not full driver. Yeah, we saw Simon throw a kahu off the tee. Jacko probably throws it slightly farther than Simon um, at this rate. Maxime, however, with an instinct, seven speed fairway driver, and probably the right play for him given the position that he's in. And he's put it into an excellent spot, Jake, right in the middle of the fairway, looking at the basket. Absolutely. I don't think he even needs to go for the, the pin there. He could just lay up, lay up, and then tap in um, for a par mm. and to take out the tournament. Great gallery of onlookers 
uh, perched atop the fence there on the left hand side to see our final card and this is the one that will seal the deal for Maxine. An excellent shot there into the basket. You can't see it going any other way now. I think Maxime's pretty much sealed the deal with that shot. What a finish from Maxime. He clutched up when he needed it. And barring an absolute miracle from Jacko from way back in the fairway, Maxime is odds on to be crowned our North Island champion. And the upshot from the man who did make this card very interesting, Jacko, just catching that tree. I mean, that's going to be a tough part of it. It's probably going to be a layup from here. Well, he tries it. Oh, trying to give people something to clap about. It's been fantastic to see Jacko and Simon, for that matter, return to form in this tournament they've struggled a little bit in the early parts of this year at least in the majors so to be right up there amongst the names at the top of the leaderboard is something to be proud of for the two of them and Simon particularly he's been struggling with injury but throughout this year very niggly that shoulder challenges of his and he's put together an awesome tournament <laughs> yeah good to see the man back Simon was one at the top of the leaderboards when I started playing disc golf um, only a couple of years ago so um, to see him back at the top, awesome. And Jacko, yeah, Jacko. leading the way for the New Zealanders. Indeed Jacko will finish as our top Kiwi here at the North Island Champs and what a commendable tournament to Jacko, 18 down on his three rounds. Levi to maintain his position on the podium there with Simon barring something um, outstanding from our chase card. But with this part, your 2023 Taupo Nuitea North Island Disc Golf Champion, the muscles from Brussels, it's Maxine Taj. A very impressive display, all tournament 9 down in the first round and an exceptional back 11 to close it out. Absolutely, way to pull finger there coming home and really just seal it. Look at that back 9, a lot of green on the scorecards, not much grey and bugger all booty, uh, bogey sorry. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you for everything. It was, uh, it was hard. Thank you for my mates, uh, for everybody, MDG team, all the spectators, and uh, you know, to Jaco. It was a hard fight, man. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I will speak later, you know, at the press ceremony. <laughs> Maxine, gracious in his win, uh, commending Jaco on the hard push. So good to see. Good man. And with that, the North Island Championships have come to a close. Maxime Tange from Belgium, your winner here at uh, in Taupo, 21 under for the tournament. Jackson Sullivan, a very respectable um, uh, event himself, the top Kiwi at 18 down. Simon Feezy and Levi Stout both finish on 15 under, tied with Jaden Watkinson, who also had a really, really tidy final round. Um, they complete your podium. Francis Orange with the hottest round of the day at nine down. He was seven down, Jake, through our front ten. And uh, a great tournament from all there in our top ten. Henry Pearson sneaking his way up onto the top ten there. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Not too bad from a guy who doesn't practice all that much. A really good tournament, in fact, for myself. But look, all of the accommodation should really be going to our winner, Maxine. Good to have him back. Hopefully he comes back to New Zealand one day and um, plays again on, on what we might say is a more technical course. But once again, thank you for joining us at T-Box Media. We hope to see you again.